message for this Bom, bom dia a todos e a todas. Então, hoje temos mais um colóquio do IFISC. Hoje nós temos, hoje o colóquio ele será em inglês, então eu vou trocar para o inglês. Para os alunos no final que quiserem fazer perguntas, fiquem à vontade de fazer em português, nós traduzimos, ou em inglês mesmo. Fiquem à vontade. So now I'll switch to English. So today we have the pleasure of receiving Professor Shia here with us. Uh, and uh, she was. Uh, accepted the invitation uh, to, to give our colloquium, and she's a, a guest from Professor Paulo, so I'll invite Professor Paulo to give uh, the introduction of Professor Shia. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have today the pleasure of uh, receiving here Professor Rui Dong Sha. She's, um, uh, she did a PhD uh, many years ago at the University of Nottingham in the UK. She's originally from China, but then uh, she did all the education in the, uh, the PhD education in, in the UK. After uh, graduating, uh, having the PhD from Nottingham, she moved to the Imperial College in London, and then she uh, stayed there as a researcher in the group of Donald Bradley, a very famous uh, researcher in the area of organic electronics and so on. So uh, she stayed there for many years, and in 2012, she moved back to China, and uh, she uh, became a professor at the uh, Institute of Advanced Materials at the Nanjing University of Post and Telecommunications. And uh, since then, she's been very active in the field of organic, use of organic materials for electronics, and for uh, optoelectronics, the solar cells, uh, lasers, and so on. And she will talk about these topics today. Uh, she has over 100 publications, 10 patents. So she's very active not only on research, but the technological developments as well. And uh, she, we have the honor of having her here in the joint collaboration with the BRICS project funded by CNPQ the uh, Chinese uh, uh, Science Foundation, and the, uh, we have a collaborator also in India. So it's a joint program with India, China, and Brazil. So she's coming uh, within, the, within the scope of this collaboration, and she's spending just two days here in São Carlos, but uh, we are very happy that uh, she, she could come. And uh, Professor Hui Dong, thank you for coming and accepting our invitation. Good morning, everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, thank uh, San Carlo, uh, San Carlo uh, University of San Paulo Physics Department gave me this chance to present my work here. So, <coughs> so this is uh, my email address. If you're interested in some of those, want to contact me, just send me email like this. So this is uh, my topic. So basically, I will introduce something on the organic laser work in our group. Uh, before start my scientific talk, I would like to uh, show you something about our university. So here, this map of China, here's Shanghai, here's Nanjing, so my university in Nanjing. About two hours by the ultra-fast train. I have a very good partner, so research partner in Guangzhou here. So this city is very close to Hong Kong area, so in south part of the China. It's also a very nice city. So uh, Nanjing is a very historical city. So I think it's uh, about uh, 800 years ago. It's a capital city for Ming Dynasty. Uh, dynasty. So that's uh, a lot of uh, historical place it's worth to visit. The uh, people are very nice. Sometimes you will see them uh, dancing on the street or play the typical Chinese Tai Chi like that. Uh, of course, we have very delicious food. You must try. So, uh, 
this is my university. So it looks, uh, it's very big. Uh, our lab is a fr start from here to the end. The number five building is uh, our uh, science, uh, material science and uh, engineer institute. So this part is mainly student accommodation. So in China, uh, if we offer your study in university, we normally offer your accommodation as well. But of course, you pay a little bit. But students can stay together. So during the pandemic, we lock the gate, then students can stay inside, continue their study and the food, no problem. So they still can enjoy the life inside the campus. The campus is very, very big. So uh, the research uh, equipment we have, uh, this is some of that. So basically, we have uh, the basic setup for sample test, so material test, and the device fabrication, morphology test, or the uh, something like X-ray to test uh, the structures of the material. So we have almost uh, all the basic equipment for the research. So we have uh, about 100 uh, research staff, lecturers and uh, professors. Every year we take about 300 uh, master degree students and uh, uh, about 70 PhD students, but this depends on the funding supply. So because we are material science, so our staff have a mixed background. Some of them come from material science, some from physics like me, and a lot also from chemistry department. So one of the research area is material synthesis. Uh, we have a, a lot of people doing the functional material synthesis for LED solar cell, and laser, and uh, biosensor. So it can be oligomer, dendrimer, or small molecule, uh, or nanotube. And the recent years, we had some people doing quantum dot and uh, provoscate, because this is developed a very fast area. So for the device people, uh, we can study the uh, device fabrications, uh, for instance, like uh, spin coating or the print, or the, the, or the uh, blood, uh, blood uh, printing. So that is, uh, we call that a solution principle uh, process. And also we have people doing the LED and the light. Uh, some people doing solar cell or sensor detector. And uh, my area is basically in laser and uh, amplify. We can make the, uh, the uh, laser bar like this, uh, or the grating fabrication, grating and the deposit material to make the laser as well. So I talk about the Guangzhou. That is a, a very close the partner of our research. So uh, that group, uh, they have a big group use like something like a bamboo or the agricultural straws uh, because that's mainly carbon. So they can make uh, something like an uh, electro, uh, electrode because they, they put something uh, like a silver particle, make it conductive. Then we use that to, um, as an electric code for our solar cell. Or they can also use this to make uh, the capacitor super compactor and, uh, uh, and uh, de detect the water and clean the water. So this is a group we are closely linked with. So they start with this, then they, and this, this group use bamboo, also make uh, the bamboo alcohol. So if you go to China, you can enjoy that. So this is uh, some sample from uh, this group. So the liquid, you can see that there are some fibers, that is bamboo. And uh, if you see this part, that is, they make the thin film already, so it's a flexible look. It's really flexible, like the plastic. But uh, this is uh, environmental friendly, 
no pollinates, so you can put into skin and eat, you can eat it, no problem, like a jelly. So, because this can make alcohol as well, so all the princess fabrication is very, very clean in one rental free. So this, this is a big group we are work together. So they, uh, their aim is doing anything toward the low cost, flexible solution principle, environmental friend, and the large scale device. So they, you can make a solar cell and a touch screen something device, all sorts of things. And I talk about this group because they know, oh sorry. Sorry. <coughs> because they currently have a scholarship for a PhD student. If someone interesting can tell, can contact me and I send the, the link to link you to, to this group. So you can go to Guangzhou. That is uh, fully paid for accommodation. And uh, you can do the research in their group. So uh, of course, mainly in China, the language is, is Mandarin Chinese. But in the research group for research, English is uh, no problem. If you just do a simple task like uh, else or TOF, to, to, to show you, you, you have good enough English, then you can contact them uh, to, to, do, to do the research in their group and they enjoy the bamboo alcohol as well. Uh, so for the collaboration between China and uh, Brazil, it's a long history. This information tells uh, China and Brazil have over 40 years collaboration in these two countries in some fundamental research, innovation, and the industry. And recently, last, I think last month, Brazil president visited China and uh, our president, Xi Jinping, meet, uh, meet him. And uh, they agreed. This is an announcement, so we will continue on collaboration on innovation, renew renewable energy, and the industry. So hopefully we'll have some research funding uh, for joint the group come soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Apart from the, uh, the student funding from any university and the local government, uh, there's, uh, as uh, Paulo said, uh, the break uh, program. So that's called among these five countries, Brazil, China, South Africa, Russia, India, uh, you organize three uh, group team from three different countries, you can play for breaks. So that uh, is uh, uh, the project we worked together with the poll. So in China side, the money is very attractive. So we always try hard to get this. Another one is, uh, if you write down this web page, you can search. So this is uh, the Chinese central government funding. Uh, that can support Chinese go abroad and also foreigners come to China to do study and research. Uh, you can do one to three months, a short time. That's uh, you don't need English training. Or you can do a long term, over one year, so one to three years, do a full PhD or two or a master's degree. In that case, you may need to learn some Chinese. So the, then, once you get this scholarship, they give you one year or six months in, uh, Chinese training. Training, you speak uh, and read the uh, Mandarin. So basically, after that, uh, you can talk to some Chinese people. So this, uh, you just go to this web page, you will find uh, which one is suitable for you. So that's cover your accommodation, living costs, everything for that. So this, this is quite good uh, uh, scholarship. <coughs> so now I, talk, uh, I, I will start talk about some of our research. Uh, before start to uh, say something about our laser research, uh, I want to first uh, briefly uh, see something about the basic principle and the constructor of a uh, laser. So, so you can get an idea what is different between laser and uh, normal light. Then I will go to 
what we have done in organic uh, and uh, provoscate material. Then I will show you some interesting application on this material. So that is dual layer organic and uh, provoscate film for dual wavelengths uh, AIC. And uh, I think there are a lot of people nowadays doing the solar cell work. So I will quickly show some of our solar cell work. So that is the last part. So now, basic principle and the construction of the laser. So you can see this, this we call that the laser point. And uh, compare the, the laser and the normal light, uh, you can see the intensity is very different. For the sunlight to come to the Earth, in general, it's about this. And uh, I'm sure you know the helium no, uh, nano laser in the physics lab. From first year study, you will see that. So you see that's very big, similar to this one. But that intensity compared with the sunlight. We talk about the intensity. Oh, uh, yesterday I visited some of your lab, you have the pulse laser. So for that pulse laser, the power supply, uh, so, so the output laser density could be this or this. So very, very strong if you if we talk about the density. So that is one difference between laser and uh, the normal light. Another thing is the diversion angle. If you see the room light, it can go to everywhere, a very broad area uh, dispersed. But for the laser, you see the, po the small spot is very sharp focus. So this is uh, one, another different. So when you go to the laser lab, I always remind you, be careful. Uh, don't let this uh, uh, sh uh, uh, shining on your light. So all our laser lab, the optical bench, have to be this high, cannot be this high. So be careful, the laser is very dangerous. Let's talk about some physics on the laser. What is different between the laser and a normal light if we talk about the energy level, absorption, and the emission? The full name is, uh, is laser, of laser is uh, uh, light amplified uh, stimulated e emission. So, so laser is a light amplification by stimulate emission of radiation. Uh, I try to write more detail. If you couldn't understand my English, you can always uh, read uh, this part. Uh, in terms of the atom, uh, we know that have energy level, high level, low level, ground state also. Uh, so if the, uh, the electron stay in the low level, here is a photon come in with the energy at h mu equal to the difference between this energy level. Then it can happen, we call that a stimulated absorption. That is, this this electron absorbs the photon energy, then jump to high level. This is one case. Another case is if there's a, a electron at high level for a while, it may drop down to the low level, give a photon with the, the energy between these two uh, energy gap. So that is, a, we call that spontaneous emission because it's just randomly drop down, give the light. So this is uh, the normal light we see from the room light. And uh, there's uh, the third case. That is when the photon come out, uh, come to the system, with uh, the energy equal to the difference between these two levels, that's h mu equal to, uh, uh, equal to this difference. Then, on the same time, there's an electron on the high level, uh, on high energy level. So it could happen that this photon stimulated this electron drop down and gave another photon. So that's what we call stimulated emission. So this case is a laser happened. So that is different, uh, different between spontaneous emission and uh, 
a stimulated EEG. So this laser need a photon to stimulate the, the high level electrons to give out another photon. So then the question is, if the photon come, if uh, the photon come with uh, this uh, energy, it will stimulate the high level electron or it will be absorbed by low level electron. This is two case. What will happen? So, uh, if you look at uh, the textbook, uh, they, uh, it will tell you uh, Einstein found the probability for these two transition case are equal. So that means this case and this case are equal, possibility is equal. So if we want to get a laser, we have to have the system, the population in here, more than population in here, yes? So that can make a, this stimulated emission dominated uh, the stimulated uh, absorption, yes? But of course, this, this case, if there's an uh, e electron on high level, always happen this, this spontaneous emission. So it's not all the material can have this, uh, uh, this behavior. So if the material can achieve the laser, which we call that the laser material or the optical gain medium, to achieve that, uh, uh, have to be make the stimulated emission process dominate the, the absorption process. So the upper energy level has to contain more electrons than the lower energy level. So that we call the population in walls. So this is very important. So every laser material, the difference between the normal life here and the laser material is the laser material can achieve the population in walls. So this, in general, I don't want to go to more detail. So uh, if it's a two energy level system, it's impossible to get the uh, uh, population in walls. Has to be at least a three energy level. So the low level electrons are normally ground state. So that is uh, the electrons stay there more comfortable. So have to be <coughs> bumped to the high level, then it can drop to this middle level. Then between these two le between these two level can achieve population in walls, uh, then get the laser. Or it's better to have four level system. Uh, because uh, this is normally the ground state, uh, that is uh, most of the electrons stay here. If you, the power supply get to, uh, to make this get the, the electron jump to the high level like uh, here, then it's jump to here, then this, this level normally is empty. So between this one and this one, it's far more easy to achieve the population in walls. So that's why we say the four level system it, it will get a more, um, get a laser more easy than three level system. And uh, also the stimulated photon, as I said, it's just like a copy of the original photon. So one photon st stimulated the, the electron get a second photon. So they are uh, exactly the same. Then these two, continue stimulated the other two, so become eight, four, then four become eight. So if you see from the beginning is one, then become huge. So that look like uh, amplify, that make the photon amplified. So this is a principle of the, uh, the optical fiber amplify. <coughs> so when we make the laser, we, at the same time, we identify the material that can achieve the optical amplified. So uh, we talk about the construction of the laser. So to achieve the laser, we need uh, the energy, either electrical or optical bump, to make the low level electron jump down to high level, then drop to here and uh, build up the population in walls. So that is the power supply part. 
If you go to the laser lab, you can see the big power supply part with the cooling. And also, we have to hold some photon to make sure the stimulated emission keep going, happen continuously. That is, we call that a resonant cavity. So normally, it's a two-reflector mural. One is with uh, maybe 100% uh, reflection, another is 99%. So leave that 1% for laser beam go out. So that is, uh, if you see the laser basically constructed, it's like that. So <coughs> to achieve the laser, have to build up a population in walls and uh, have to uh, supply enough the photons to do the stimulated photon. So that's why we laser have threshold, but the normal light don't have threshold. Once the power, you, you put on the power, always the light come out, but for laser, you have to pump hard enough, so that's what we call the threshold. Make the gain over the loss. The loss can be anything, even the output light also kind of loss. So that is uh, the basic list about the laser. And uh, if you compare, the, then let's, uh, the spread is uh, normal light more dis dispersed and uh, the laser more focused. And the spectrum, is uh, the normal light is, is broad, but uh, the laser, because the uh, stimulated emission, just like uh, the copy of the uh, photon, so they are exactly the same in wavelengths and uh, in the propagation uh, direction. So, and uh, the energy density, we said, is uh, Laser is very high, but the normal light is uh, comparable low. Radiation, the laser is a stimulated uh, emission, and uh, the normal light is a spontaneous emission. And we call about uh, the energy status to build up a, a laser system have to be three or four level system, but the normal uh, light just need a two level system. And, uh, pump supply, so that's, for laser, you have to make sure it's high enough to overcome the losses, so that is, uh, lasers have the threshold. Also, laser need uh, the uh, cavity to build up the uh, stimulated uh, emission. So, the first laser was invented by Mayman, so like that. So, if you go to more detail about textbook, they will tell you the mode of the laser, blah, blah. And uh, if you open the, the laser, real laser, uh, you will see the structure basically like this. So the laser bar uh, or the crystal, that's what we call the gain media. A bit, and uh, in this two end, there's a two reflection mural. And uh, the flash lamp for supply the energy to make the population worse. So this is a pumping energy supply. Of course, you can use the electric directly pumped. So now I will briefly introduce something about our work on organic laser and the provoscate laser. So why we look for organic laser? Because uh, organic material uh, have the wavelengths cover a whole visible range. And it's easy to achieve the four level electronic si uh, the, the energy system like this. So from the ground state, you can bump that to here and uh, jump to here. Between this and this can build up the population in walls. So it's, uh, it's very easy. So now, Optic bumped uh, uh, laser already demonstrated. That first one is demonstrated in 1996, I think. But after 20 years, electrically pumped organic laser still haven't demonstrated yet. It's still a big question mark. If it's possible to achieve uh, directly electrically pumped organic laser, it's really a kind of a Nobel Prize challenge. If you get that, uh, very possible, you get the Nobel Prize. So that is that. So far, uh, it's already 20 years, so still not to uh, demonstrate that. So for our work, uh, in one kind, we identify the organic laser material and the try to fabricate uh, 
the uh, the amplifier amplifier uh, amplifier because of the plastic like a PMMA uh, the uh, the attenuation window so here is a very low loss window 650 and also for all the visible part uh, the PMMA gave very low losses so it's worth to try to make the plastic uh, uh, fiber amplifier because nowadays the semiconductor amplifier use uh, infrared 1.33 or 1.35 so that is uh, infrared and uh, that use uh, like uh, silicon but if we shift it to visible wavelengths that uh, the resolution could be high and also the cost will be lower and uh, of course flexible so that is our advantage. And face to this challenge, we still think about how we can achieve this. So to do that, uh, on our organic laser work, we always treat the way, how can we reduce the laser threshold so that the pumping energy cannot be very, very high. Another thing is to improve the thermal stability of the laser material. Uh, because uh, the laser needs a threshold. If we, we, we try the electric pump, the, the current intensity could be very high, over several amps or 100 amps. In that case, the device can be very hot, uh, very hot, can be burned in the minute. So it's very uh, important to improve the thermal uh, stability. And also, the big disadvantage of the organic material is uh, the low charge mobility for, uh, for electrical pump. So this is uh, some people try to improve the organic material's uh, mobility. So this is uh, also behind the, the laser study, we have to study the physics behind the material. So, um, uh, this is uh, the measurement setup. We're doing the laser study. So first, uh, we identify the material, see if it's a good material for laser. So we don't directly uh, make the, the laser. We just uh, put a film on a substrate, like a glass or the silica. Uh, so this is a film. Then we test if this film can show the uh, amplified spontaneous emission or not. Then we will uh, think about uh, to make uh, the laser structure. So because uh, between uh, this air and the substrate, uh, the uh, refraction index are different. So it can make a waveguide to guide the light going this way and come out from the side. So in the real system, that is uh, the bumping laser, we use uh, the nanosecond uh, laser. Uh, for, it uh, uses a cylinder lens to focus it uh, as a strip on the sample. Then you put a detector in this age. If the uh, AIC, that is uh, amplified uh, spontaneous emission happened, uh, you will detect it from here. That is, uh, you can see the peak become narrow. So the real setup is like here. We use a red material and uh, focus lens on the top. So detector is in here. <coughs> if, the, if it's a good laser material, then we try to build up the laser. It's uh, very simple. Uh, the structure is uh, for optical pump. Uh, instead of the, f uh, the planned uh, the, uh, glass, we fabricate uh, the grating on this uh, glass or silicon with a different period for different wavelengths uh, laser output then deposit uh, the film. If we use a one dimension grating, then we can get the laser like that. So that's a, the, uh, the optical pump come this way, and this is a film, and the detector in this side, you can see the laser like that, and you can take the laser spectrum. You will see a sharp spectrum come out. So before, be, below the threshold, there's just a normal luminescence, the PL. Spectrum. Uh, once reach the threshold, you can see a sharp peak come. And this uh, wavelength, the uh, output laser wavelength can be tuned 
by change the period of the grating or change the thickness of the film. And also we can use uh, the two-dimension grating. So the two-dimension grating, just like uh, if you go to the, sh uh, the supermarket, buy the egg, that uh, the egg box, you put the egg, so the two-dimension grating just like that. So the two-dimension grating will give the laser like that. So in our group, because we have some uh, chemistry uh, chem uh, chem people to do the synthesis, so they, they make this material, then uh, we can identify what is a good laser material. So all these are synthesis in our group. So this is a kind of dendrim, and this we call that H-shape uh, oligomer, and this is a basic PFO, so by modifying PFO, add some set chain, we achieved all this material. So that is uh, our early work. When I just go back to China, we did something like that. So we can demonstrate the laser uh, cover the whole visible wavelengths. And they use a different material, like a small molecular oligomer and the polymer. After that, we think about uh, how to make uh, the better organic material for laser. So that means how can we reduce the threshold, increase uh, the thermal stability. So that's, we start with the PFO, just the other set chain. Uh, with this set chain, we found the homolumo level can be tuned, and also, compare the morphology, we think it can be improved. In that way, the quantum efficiency also increased a little bit. So, uh, by this way, we found it's possible to reduce the laser threshold. So this is PFO uh, material we buy from the uh, commercial company. Then we add, uh, the, we call that DP set chain the laser threshold can reduce uh, to one third or a quarter. So uh, with uh, just very small amount, but if you add too much, the, the, the spectrum will shift. So that's what we don't want. So this is uh, one possibility to reduce the th threshold. We have demonstrated that. And another thing is because we have the H-shaped material, we think about use any transfer. The idea is if you look at the spectrum of this, uh, this, this material have absorption here and the emission here, and this one absorption, emission, absorption, emission. And this is another polyfluorence we call FHBT. That gives the green-yellow emission this absorption in here. So if you look this uh, this peak, it's just uh, almost overlap with uh, the emission part of this group of the material. So in that case, we think it could be happened, uh, energy transfer from this material to this, if we put these two materials together. So use that, that part as a host, and this as a guest, and also, when you slightly change the structure, the homolumo level also can be tuned. So we especially choose this one, so the similar one as that. So this, we always compare the material with the Bloom emission material with the PFO. So the absorption and the emission are similar to PFO, but we can use this as a guess. Uh, uh, as a host, and FHBT as a guest. Put this together, only you see, 1% until 50%, you can see the uh, uh, absorption of uh, as FHBT change like that. And the emission part, this DPH, that is this blue emission material. So that is the original DPH. With the 1%, it's, you can still see the emission from this uh, uh, this part, this material. But after 5%, the emission from this host totally disappeared. 
that means uh, the energy transfer happened. All the energy from DPH, the house material, goes to the gas material. So by this way, it's possible to reduce the uh, laser threshold as well. Uh, but we also uh, tried the PFO, but it doesn't work. The reason is, if you look at the morphology, uh, this blend, the morphology, are uh, reasonable good. But this one, you can see the phase separation, the small dot is uh, the doping of the f 8 bt It's actually don't mix together, so we call that a phase separation. So that means uh, energy transfer cannot happen. Okay, so this just show you, this is two laser material. One is green, uh, one is blue emission and uh, FHBT are uh, green yellow emission. So this compare the, uh, the, uh, the original FHBT uh, bumped at uh, the uh, wavelengths, uh, the, the absorption wavelengths of FHBT at 450. And uh, this one is after you blend, uh, with a different uh, ratio of F at BT. We bump the DPH, the host uh, absorption wavelength. You can see the AIC threshold drops hugely. So compare these two data. So that's really reduce a lot the, uh, the threshold. Of course, uh, the gain, uh, the optical gain also increased a lot. And another uh, good thing is we found that because DPH is very, very stable, you heat it over 250 degrees, it's nothing changed. So, but for f bt if you heat it over 200, it's just like that, totally no gain. But if you blend the f bt with a small percent, like 10%, 15%, you can see the morphology, no big change. So that is another advantage by this blend system. A similar work we did is uh, use a PCDBT uh, blend with FHBT. You know the PCDBT is a, is a solar cell material, almost no light come out. The quantum efficiency is less than, 50, less than 5%. But uh, once you blend that, as a guest into the house material FHBT, we are able to achieve the laser from this system. So that means, uh, as a laser material, it don't have to be very good LED material. You see this one, uh, uh, PCD DBT, almost no light come out, but uh, if you choose a good system, you can make it a laser. So that's, uh, that makes us think about what is a re really good laser material. So it don't have to be LED material. Then what is different between LED material and the laser material? So that is something which we have to understand the ultra-fast photonics behind the laser behavior. So this is something we look for some collaboration from maybe from your guys. So to put more understanding about this. Uh, so that is also uh, is, uh, the thinking about uh, the electrically pumped uh, laser. Uh, LED and uh, optical pumped uh, uh, laser happened in 1996. Over 20 years, we, all the clever people try hard to follow the LED idea to make the good LED material, think that that could be the electrically bound laser material, but uh, so far it's not happened as an electric bound. So we have to think about something different. That is my opinion. So we have to understand the physics behind this. Another thing is so far all the material, laser material, uh, if we talk about uh, the small molecule, dendrima or polymer, they are basically dissolved in something like a tolerant chlorobenzene that we call the, the non-polar uh, solvent. Uh, then we think about can we make something that is uh, alcohol-soluble or water-soluble laser material. So that's we, 
we, we tried to use this one. This is a complicated uh, polyelectric. So this is uh, the, the one a lot of people use as an interlayer for solar cell. So this, uh, some people demonstrate this can be a good interlayer or can be replaced replace for P, uh, P dot PSS to make the device LED or solar cell. Then we think about could we use this as a laser material, but this can be dissolved in some alcohol solvent. So, we add some set chain in here. We call that a PFN. This is uh, the collaboration with uh, our Guangzhou partner as well. So we were able to demonstrate uh, the laser from this material. Uh, the laser output uh, wavelengths are very similar to PFO, but uh, this one is uh, alcohol soluble. The gain is uh, slightly lower than, the, uh, than PFO, so that means uh, it's uh, it's work, but not uh, work as good as uh, PFO. But uh, we think it's uh, still adjustable, like we did on PFO. We can put some side chain again to modify this. <coughs> um, so th th this is, uh, we put onto the two-dimension laser. Uh, the grating, we can make uh, the laser from this, uh, this material. So that's it. just show you when they change the thickness the laser peak moved from 445 to 464. So this is uh, the result from this uh, alcohol soluble material. And also we tried some, some laser on the provoscate. We didn't choose uh, uh, the one with the air indium. We chose this one, brown, because this gave you know, the um, yellow range, yellow green range emission. So we use this. So the, the process is just like that. So make uh, make the solution and deposit on the on the substrate. <coughs> so uh, then we can add, uh, we can achieve the laser with the two dimension grating as well. After did uh, all this basic work, we think about uh, the, how we can use this material to do some uh, application. So then that's we tried to uh, use a two-layer material to achieve the two range of wavelengths lasers. This idea actually is come out from a company we worked at, uh, for. So we also uh, tried to use uh, the laser peak to, uh, uh, to test uh, some, uh, some, uh, some solution. Because the laser peak is uh, so sharp compared with the PL peak. So if this laser or AIC peak shift uh, one nanometer or two nanometer, it's very clear. So you can easily identify. But if this PL spectrum shift five nanometer, you know, it's hard to say it's really shaped or not. So we use this uh, narrow uh, uh, AIC or na uh, laser peak to identify some, some uh, solution. So this can give you very high resolution. Look, that is a water and uh, with a different concentration of the salt. You can see the clear, uh, the shaft of the peak. And if you plug the, uh, uh, the the shape, peak, AIC peak shape that you can see is very clear. So this work we, we did before the pandemic. Then during the pandemic, uh, some companies think uh, maybe they can do some quick test uh, use this uh, uh, technique. So this is uh, shows some sugar and uh, uh, salt water, honey water, because the index is different, just like that with a different sugar concentration and alcohol concentration or salt concentration. The index different are very, very small, but from our uh, test, uh, it can clearly identify the difference. So the company said, oh, uh, could you make the two-layer material? 
So that can give one wavelength come out that's as a, something like a references. Another as a test uh, result, something like that. So they need the, uh, the wavelengths come out from the two different range, so make clear. To, to achieve that, uh, we have to solve the problem. Number one is two layer cannot be dissolved each other. So normally we have the material. If you make a material uh, film, you know uh, they both uh, deserve the uh, intolerance or chlorobenzene. You, you, then when you put the first layer, that's fine. You put the second layer, then the first layer will be dissolved by the second layer's solvent. So that is something we have to solve the problem. But we know we have the alcohol soluble polymer gain material and the tolerant soluble material. So we can put this together to try this. Another thing is because the optical bump, we can only use one wavelength, uh, the bumping source, just one wavelength to bump the two material. So that means we have to choose two material. They have the similar absorption band. So in one wavelength, they, they have a common absorption uh, wavelength. So this is the second thing we have to think about. So, but it's doable. We, we tried. Uh, look, use this one, oxo soluble and FSBT. That is, uh, we deserve the intolerance. So then the spin coating is very easy. Dep uh, deposit the first layer and uh, leave that for dry for a few, uh, few minutes, or just uh, 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 put it into maybe the uh, uh, hot, uh, hot, pot, uh, hot plate for a few minutes. Then you deposit second layer. Oh, so then you make a two layer material. So, and also we tried uh, with this one, with this one. So this is a red emission material. This one is a green yellow emission material. So that's the way we tried this two system. First, we have to make sure it's the, uh, the second layer don't destroy the first layer. So we did uh, the SEM measurement. Uh, we can see the clear, so this ITO, and uh, then the first layer, second layer. We can see very clear in uh, the interface, so the, uh, the, the, the film quality should be reasonably good. And also the AFM shows uh, the quality is not, not bad. Uh, another way to test it is uh, uh, we compared the monolayer spectrum absorption and uh, uh, absorption and the PL for this uh, absorption and the PL for red and the blue uh, and the green and the blue. So the, the monolayer and the two layer. So it's a reasonable match. So that means uh, our two layer system really work as a two layer. So the second layer didn't destroy the first layer. After the, uh, this test, we put the bump. Uh, we use uh, the uh, about uh, 390 wavelengths to bump uh, then get the AIC from this, uh, this system. And also similarly, we get uh, the bump uh, this red and the blue uh, system, we get uh, the two AIC peak come out. After that, we tried to put this film on the grating uh, uh, substrate, then get the two laser peaks for this and for that. So you may ask, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, these two peaks should use different uh, grating. That means the grating paradox should be different. Yes, it is. So on the substrate, we have to put uh, some, uh, all the different uh, grating for, for make this uh, and this happen. So on one substrate, we put uh, a lot of uh, small size grating. They are very different, but uh, every grating is about a few hundred uh, micrometer. Uh, this work not quite finished because we know the blue emission laser, the threshold is still very high. Uh, so, but because uh, the waveguide losses, part of the uh, blue emission come out to the FSBT side, that's be observed by FSBT. So that's make a, 
the uh, threshold increase a lot. But we know how to improve it because we know we can blend the, the FATPT to another blue emission material to solve this problem. Another thing we tried is two-dimension grating. This period for blue emission, this for red emission. So use uh, this triangle uh, period for blue. It also works. So that is uh, the, uh, the thing we have done. So next step, we pass to the company because they want to do that continually. So to do something like uh, the structure like that and uh, try to modify the alcohol uh, solid material with uh, add some side chain. So this is some part, some work we already passed to the company. And uh, another thing, we know we can do multi-layer, so we tried the provoscate with the organic layer to, for same idea, we, we use the two-layer material like this. But this time, we did something different. The pumping laser we choose is uh, 450, the blue, blue laser. Uh, pumping that. Then we can see the uh, AIC from green and red. The grating, put on the grating, we can see laser and uh, uh, from green and uh, red. So together with uh, the blue pumping uh, laser, we can actually achieve RGB, the three colors laser by this structure. Uh, the threshold is still high, but we know we can improve it by improve the quality of the grating and the quality of the film. The interesting thing that we are currently want to do is because of two dimension, so we can possibly use this side for blue emission, the period, the grating period, and this for green, this for yellow, build up this RGB system. So this is something we are, uh, we are doing now in our group. So now I will quickly talk something about uh, the uh, provoscate solar cell work in our group. Uh, as we all know, the nowadays very popular tantum, uh, tantum uh, provoscate solar cell and uh, provoscate solar cell, the efficiency over 30 or even high over, uh, over 40. So in our group, uh, we, we mainly just try some, uh, some way to reduce the defect. So by add something into the interface or directly add something into provoscate solution. <coughs> so we use the inverted structure. Uh, after ITO, we just uh, make the nickel oxide and uh, add something between Provoscate and the nickel, that's SAA, the long name like that. So that can make the film more smooth to reduce the, the defect and then increase the threshold. So that is the one work we have done. Another thing is we use this one, uh, a copper oxide like that, uh, put it into the <clears throat> between the nickel oxide and the provoscate. It can also uh, reduce the defect and uh, increase uh, the efficiency. So, and also we, we, we tried to put this uh, different material into the provoscate uh, solution, then directly deposit the, uh, the solution, then we found uh, it's also possible to uh, improve the uh, PCE, the efficiency, and also it can make the device more stable. So this is uh, some work we done in the provoscate solar cell. So in some room, uh, we have developed uh, various polymer gain material, including alcohol soluble and, <coughs> and the provoscate gain material. And we demonstrate uh, the dual layer organic film for dual wavelengths laser output, demonstrate organic uh, and uh, uh, provoscate film for RGB laser. And uh, we develop, uh, develop uh, various interface layer for, C for PCE enhancement of pro provoscate solar cell. So again, we are looking for research collab uh, collaboration for funding application and uh, student exchange together. 
Uh, so this is uh, our student. Some of them already get the degree and uh, go, to, uh, go to work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Xi. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions from the from the room from the speaker? <clears throat> yeah. First of all, uh, thanks for the lecture. And one one thing I didn't understand: you were saying you simulated absorption. You need a, a photo to go to higher levels of energy, right? Yeah, he, he's just wondering about the, how laser works, how the, the stimulated absorption and stimulated emission, how, how it works exactly. Um, just. Uh, to clarify a little bit there. Okay, go back to the... To the beginning? Yeah, right there. You see the slide on the on the screen? Oh, there. You okay. Go. Yeah, this one. Just to, to explain a little bit uh, more the simulated absorption and the simulated uh, emission. Yeah, the, the yeah the next one. Uh -huh. This one. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. the, the stimulated one. I think you just want to to this clarify. One. Yeah. Uh, you mean this one? Yeah. This is quantum physics. Yeah. yeah it's the quantum the physics. Yeah. The history is yeah. Einstein. Uh, found out this. Uh, say, uh, he think uh, if the photon work, uh, come to the atom, it could happen. One is the uh, simulated uh, low level uh, uh, electron come observe uh, this energy come to the high level. Another possibility is uh, it can stimulate the high level uh, electrons drop down to the low level and give out uh, exactly the same photon as uh, the original one. Then uh, Einstein put uh, the equation and uh, uh, calculated uh, the possibility between this one and this one. Then he found uh, it's an equal po possibility for these two cases happen. Mm. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. So that uh, is a fundamental about the laser. With this idea, uh, some people start to work on the laser, mm -hmm. and also they say the how can be uh, achieve the population in wars? Because normally, on the stable uh, situation, the electron always stay in ground state. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how can you make uh, the population in this level uh, more than in this level? So this has to be. Uh, uh, in, not in the balance, the stable stage. You have to be in a uh, moving stage. So that's you have to keep bumping to, to achieve that. Yeah. You're probably going to learn oh. this in the quantum physics course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually have a question. Um, I have a few few questions. Some, one, it's, it's just to understand a little bit better because I'm not from the field. So I, um, like I was saying, I'm a high energy astrophysicist. So when you, you test these blends, how mm -hmm. exactly do you know which blends to use or which um, material to use? Uh, because you just mentioned that the, um, you still need to understand um, mm -hmm. the physics behind. So how exactly do you choose the blends then? Uh, do you, it's, you, you mix and you see when it laser, uh, yeah, it becomes a laser and it works? Uh, one idea is we look the absorption 
the, and the emission spectrum between the host and the guest. If the uh, guest absorption much overlap with uh, the host uh, emission, we think it's possible. But uh, possible not means it's work. You, when you blend this, you find uh, some material doesn't work together. It's how strong phase separation, so it doesn't work. That's we, at the beginning, we try to blend the PFO with uh, something because it looked like uh, the spectral matched very well, but it just doesn't work. So this, we, we just try to see the morphology and the spectral. Okay, so you do a lot of trial and, 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 yeah. and error. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and my second question is, uh, you, you mentioned that one of the um, uh, still um, un, undone things is the electric uh, pumped uh, laser. Yeah. Um, how do you think that this type of procedure of blending materials um, to have organic um, uh, laser, lasing materials will uh, solve this problem of having an electric uh, pumped uh, laser? Do you see how exactly does the electric, first, how, how an electric pumped a laser would work and how this uh, type of materials would solve that problem? Uh, so, uh, because um, the uh, electric pump, the, the, it really needs the high current density. So, the first, uh, the material has to be so most stable. When you burn uh, like 100 centigrade, it shouldn't change the structure, chemical structure. So that is one thing. Another thing is uh, uh, the mobility have to be good enough. We do identify some good mater material that have high mobility and high gain. So that is uh, like a PFO. We just add just uh, the side chain of PFO. PFO is F8, that means uh, the, the side chain is eight. Then we we mix the F8 with the F5 a little bit, so then that makes the mobility increased. Then the gain is done to reduce. So I think the material has to be have both good gain and good mobility to achieve the, uh, the, uh, the electric pump. But it's of course very difficult for one material to get so many advantage. That's what we think about uh, the blend system. Uh, use uh, the host, have a good, uh, maybe good mobility, good thermal stability, and uh, uh, the, the good match of the homo lumo with uh, the, uh, uh, the work function of the electrode. Then use the gas as an emission material. That gave the laser, but uh, that's just a very small amount to blend into. So it doesn't matter the morphology and the mobility, just make a good. So that is uh, our idea to do. We have more questions. Hi, thank you for your, your <laughs> talk, presentation. So I have two questions. The first, uh, how do you deal with the photodegradation of the material, the layer? They are exposed or not exposed to the air? And about the, the sequence of the layers, you know, um, the attenuation of the first one influences in the, the absorber, absorption about these two. I don't know the, if you change the first and the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you mean so how to make the two layer? Uh, because we have to choose uh, the two materials that can use a different solvent. Make sure these two solvents don't uh, dissolve each other. So this is one thing. Another thing is uh, we have to find uh, these two materials have a s similar absorption band. Uh, a little bit, uh, at least uh, in one wavelength, they are overlap, so we can do this. So that's why we, we, we develop some alcohol soluble material to do this. I also have a question. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. It was great. And uh, concerning with the fact that actually you have to find out uh, a material that have the similar absorption band, 
Uh, have you ever think in using any photosynthetizer? I don't know if you are familiarized with that dyes, which some of them have similar absorption and mm -hmm. different um, emission wavelengths. Have you ever tried to, to, to use uh, one of them? Yeah, we, we can try the laser dye. Uh, that's a mainly alcohol soluble one, but uh, that's one is difficult to make uh, the film. Uh, when you make the film, the film um, uh, morphology is very bad, and we cannot make a thick enough film uh, to to start uh, to make the gain start. So this is a problem. So to do that, we have to blend uh, that uh, with a PMMA or something like a polystyrene to make the film. If we use a uh, small molecular laser dye. Got it. And, and what about the, the, the health time life of these uh, uh, molecules? Which so is the half time, half uh, lifetime, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you, you, you mean the PL decay time? Like half lifetime. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's about a few nanoseconds. Less than one or two nanoseconds. Thank you. Do we have any, any more questions from the room? Yeah, Paul. In the first example you showed with the blend, um, you clearly show energy transfer. But the energy levels that you showed suggested that it could happen uh, charge transfer because the alignment of homo-lumo was uh, different than yeah. I expected. Yeah. Is this, uh, how do you explain that? I mean, uh, is that maybe a uncertainty in the determination of the energy levels, homo mm, that, That's when we did uh, some uh, bump probe to start that. So sometimes, uh, you have to carefully choose uh, the house and the gas. Not uh, always you see the spectral match, it's going to work. Only this one we found between, it's a competition between the charge transfer and the energy transfer. So that's, a, with this blend system, we see the bump, uh, bump probes shows a quick window, stimulated part window. So that means the energy transfer even faster than the uh, charge absorption band mm -hmm. behavior. But uh, to do this, we think we need more physics study to better understand that. Another quick question is, on, on, you mentioned this uh, one-dimensional grating mm -hmm. to do two wavelengths in the output. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you have to do two gratings in the same substrate, is that what yeah. you do? Uh, because uh, the substrate actually is uh, just uh, one centimeter, but uh, our grating is very small. We just fabricate uh, a lot of small grating, few hundred micro size grating on mm -hmm. one substrate with a different period. So uh, then when you bump uh, that. So one, one grating is in one region, another grating is in another region. Yes, yeah, so just uh, uh, like a small okay. uh, dot. Uh, do you still have a question? Okay, <coughs> I have one uh, <coughs> question regarding also the multi wavelength, mm -hmm. um, if you can have an RGB, you, you show that, that, uh, that idea of having different um, directions yeah, yeah. for each mm -hmm. laser. W do you know of any applications of those RGB for lasers, if you can combine them and create multi-colored uh, lasers at the end uh, of your, like, connecting with fibers or something like that? Do you have any applications of that already in mind? At this moment, because it's a very initial study, okay. so we, we still need to do a lot of work on that. But there's a company said they doing the laser display. Right. Uh, use a gallium nitride uh, laser, mm -hmm. uh, the semi-contact laser. But the red part is not a real laser. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the emission powder. So that means uh, the laser is a gallium nitride blue emission laser, but uh, the red part is still the luminescence. So they think if it's possible to make the real uh, RGB display. Uh, so that, that is, uh, we talk, 
with him about this. Uh, in that sense, how, how do you select the colors if you have, uh, if you are thinking about uh, RGB display, how do you select the colors? You change the polarization of the... Uh, well, uh, according to the guy, because we just demonstrated it's possible, then they can do the later to adapt uh, the, our idea to their fabrication. Uh, part. So they think uh, one is uh, they can use control because uh, the thresholds are different. Uh, they, they can uh, more, uh, control the, uh, the power supply, the, the threshold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so another thing is they put uh, either filter or the polarization to control. Okay, so I guess we don't have any more questions from the room, so let's thank Professor Chia again. Thank you. Thank you. And the colloquium is closed. <laughs>